afternoon. Welcome to my laboratory. Uh, this is going to be a little bit more on the Genrad Strobotac. Uh, what I'm going to do now is talk about using the uh, external trigger input to trigger the thing. This is a really weird instrument. It's not, uh, not what we're used to in this digital era uh, on the trigger. Um, so here I just have a shielded cable plugged into the quarter inch phone jack trigger with a regular uh, phono RCA phono plug on the other end okay so uh, and so what's happening is that the strobo attack is providing a voltage at this capacitively coupled trigger input and depending on the impedance of the instrument you use to measure the voltage it can be anywhere from 35 to 45 volts if I use the oscilloscope, I get about 48 volts. If I use the cheapo, uh, uh, where is it? If I use the, I don't even know where it is now. I'm losing things. If I use the cheapo multimeter, the red one, I get 36 volts. If I use the fluke, I get uh, something like 40 volts. So what's happening here is a capacitor is being charged. It's not a very big capacitor, and when that capacitor gets discharged, uh, the system sees a voltage drop on the center electrode there, and that's what triggers the strobe. So what exactly does it take to make that voltage drop across the input uh, system then? Well, if I, what I've discovered is that if I just uh, short the input, then I get a flash. I short it against uh, the hands here. You can hear it. I've got it on low intensity mode. So just simply shorting that trigger input uh, causes it to flash. Well, okay, but what about uh, resistors? Well, I tried uh, shorting it through some resistors and I found that uh, a one mega ohm resistor or higher will not trigger it but a 680K, this is about 687K here, this combination, uh, does trigger it. Um, okay, so there's a threshold in there of uh, voltage drop that the system needs to see for the strobe itself to be triggered. And uh, uh, one mega ohm short won't do it, but a 687 K short and anywhere down from there all the way to a direct short will do it. Okay, so uh, so it's providing a voltage output. So to use the phototransistor with it, all I have to do is simply plug that voltage output in series with uh, f with the phototransistor's emitter collector junction and a, and a resistor in there of some value that'll make the on uh, resistance something less than 687k and I've got a 120k uh, ohm resistor in there so now uh, you can see that if I shadow the photo detector nothing happens but then when I uncover it I get a flash so shadow nothing uncover it I get a flash shadow flash shadow flash okay so the system is triggering on the falling edge of the voltage at the center pin of the trigger input. Right? Okay, so now uh, that's that, but what if I want to trigger it, sorry, unplug that, what if I want to trigger it with uh, some kind of a, of a modern signal like a TTL level uh, plus or minus 5 volt pulse or the output from something like uh, like the DP101 pulse generator well what do I do then? Oh, I'm still in. Sorry I'm in manual focus mode let me change that now we're back to autofocus okay well in order to do that what I've done is I've made this little module here that's a 2N2222 transistor and I experimented around to find the correct series resistance for this 
and I settled on uh, 60k. That's two 120k's in parallel there, which was the easiest way I could get in there. Then this is the base. So the collector emitter junction is across the phone plug or phono plug there uh, across the Strobotech input and then the base of this little module is just hanging out free there. Okay, so let's plug that in and see what uh, what happens. Sorry, not enough hands. Okay, now I've got that little module plugged in with the base just floating. So if I touch the base with my finger, I get a nice 60 hertz hum triggering the strobo tack now. Okay. Right. And I've got the and the, the reason that I chose the resistors the way I did was so that a plus five volt input to the base here would cause the triggering to occur on the strobo tack. So now I can feed a plus 5 volt input with respect to ground of course into the base of this 2222 and trigger the strobo tack uh, that way. Okay. So that's that's just your 60 hertz hum there. But again, if I apply any plus or minus 5 volt signal there, the flash will be triggered on the falling edge of that 5 volt pulse through the 2222A adapter, or I'm sorry, 2222, that's not an A uh, adapter module there. Okay, now I've got the full setup uh, as as I'm using it. I have the, the shielded cable to the input of the strobo tack. Now going to the 2N2222 transistor module and it's got a signal to its base coming through this uh, 50 ohm terminated line going over to the positive output of the DP101 pulse generator with its output set to 5 volts. Okay, the negative output of the pulse generator is going over to the oscilloscope just for monitoring purposes. I don't even, I'm not even going to show that signal. The trigger input to the DP101 is coming now from the this white wire here which goes into the photo detector housing to the uh, to the transistor side of the 170k resistor that's on the emitter of the transistor so this lead here goes between the emitter and the 170k resistor. The other end of the 170k resistor goes to the ground. And plugged into the normal input connection, or output connection, both here, uh, this is across the emitter collector 170k resistor series. That goes down to the power supply, which is giving it 8.2 volts. Uh, as a supply to the photo transistor. Okay, so now to confirm that the system works as it did before, here's my finger. So shadow, light, shadow, light, shadow, light, shadow, light. Sometimes the frame rate of the camera is missing the strobes flashing, but it's you can probably hear it. Click click, click, uh, select a high intensity flash there. Okay.
Okay, so it triggers once on what what is the the uh, trailing edge of the shadow, right? And that trailing edge of the shadow corresponds to a voltage drop as seen at the tip of that connector right there. All right. Now let's see if I can actually demonstrate something going on here. So I've just turned on the water pump and let's see if it's actually going to pump some water. Okay, there we go. There's the water pumping. And of course with all my fooling around I've got the There we go. Now the spacing's about right. Okay, I'm getting pretty consistent flashing now at every drop. Okay, the camera is not picking up the position of the drop uh, in the gate. You can just barely see it there once in a while. It's flashing, it's occurring right at the gate position, which is at about 10.4 centimeters on that ruler. It's moving the room light around a little bit, which is not helping. Okay, now if I change the delay setting on the strobo tack, or rather on the DP-101, that's the maximum delay. Now you can see the drop image happening down there at around the... What is that, the 13 centimeter position? Yeah, there it is. Okay, so now if I reduce the delay at the DP-101, see the position of that drop go up until now with the minimum delay, it's right up at the gate. At 10.4 centimeters. Oops. So they're increasing delay. Drop moves down. Decreasing delay. Drop moves up. Okay, thank you for watching.